Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of Collider Mailbag. My name is Dennis. I'm joined by... Perry, I have legs. <laughs> yes, as you can see, we kind of have a new little look to, to Mailbag that we're trying out, see how you guys like it. Perry, how are you doing today? I'm okay. I'm, I'm moving. I feel, moving. I feel good. I feel like the energy coursing through me right now. Cool, yeah, especially we also had Black Panther open this weekend, and we have some Black Panther questions that we're going to be mm -hmm. answering. If you guys don't know, this is the show where we answer your viewer-submitted questions. How do you do that? You email us at collidervideo at gmail.com, and we'll answer them on today's show, sometimes on Movie Talk, mm -hmm. uh, but mostly on this show and tomorrow's Sunday show. Yep. All right, the first question we got, we've got from Ariel, and Ariel writes, how can so many people, myself included, say that a certain film was snubbed or should have won Best Picture if at the same time we all believe film is subjective? Certain films are objectively better than others, but when discussing Best Picture nominees, they're usually all well made. So how can we say the Academy got it wrong. Perry, what do you think? It's a fair question to pose, but really it comes down to the fact that even the Academy Award voters, mm -hmm. they're, they're all human beings with personal tastes. So yes, all of these films are on a certain level compared to everything else, but you could still have personal preferences and think one is better than another. When you look at the idea of something being snubbed, I guess, I don't really know if, if that makes any difference. I mean, the, fa the fact that Academy voters, even though you're supposed to be voting on what you think is the best picture of the year, everybody still has a personal opinion. Everybody thinks a film is of a certain quality. Everybody connects to a certain piece of material in a different way. So really, Academy voters are not robots. So yeah. that's why things like this happen. Yeah, and also, when you think about the awards themselves, they are a subjective awards. There's, mm -hmm. there's no way you can calculate mathematically which is the best picture. It's not like the box office where you can say, okay, someone made more money that's objectively you know, higher or lower. So I feel like when after the awards come out, whether or not a movie gets nominated or, or wins, uh, the snub thing is subjective. So I don't think it's that much different. It's just on, just on the level of, okay, that didn't get nominated or whatever. And so, we, so when he's talking about people saying that, yeah. People say that already knowing that this is a subjective opinion. It's, you know, people say that all the time. We say it on Movie Talk. Like, oh, I can't believe so-and-so didn't get nominated. Or, I can't believe you like this movie better than mm -hmm. that movie. That movie is better. Wait, how can, how can you think that movie... It's all subjective. We just don't need to say it every time we give an opinion. Yeah, I mean, really, the only way to narrow it down is if you have some sort of mathematical equation where everything was scored in different ways and then that score was tallied up and then maybe we wouldn't have this kind of conversation. But fact is, it's not how it works. And I don't think that's how I would want it to work or anybody else out there. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to move on to the second question. We're so, literally going yes. to move so follow to us. the second question. Follow us over this here. This is so exciting. All right. All right. Question number two today comes from James, who writes, I've been a solid fan of the MCU since watching Iron Man in theaters. For reasons I can't fathom, I'm having trouble mustering excitement about Infinity War. Am I alone in this? Is it possible we're reaching a saturation point with superhero movies? On the other hand, I'm super stoked about Black Panther. What do you think? Well, James, I think it's less of an issue of superhero fatigue for you and more of the kind of stories that you are more interested in. It sounds like you're more interested in Black Panther because it's a more personal, intimate story. I mean, you know, as far as a superhero mm -hmm. movie goes, versus he's talking about Infinity War with the whole, like, it's the end of the world, it's the end of the universe. Yeah. And I think that's a, a problem or a criticism of a lot of these films. Not only superhero films, but other big budget films where it's like, it's the end of this. It's, I find myself, like James, more attracted to things that have more personal uh, stakes, right? Mm -hmm. Like if this character, like, you know, I, I keep harping and talking about how much I love Logan because it's, it's personal stakes for the character, it's character development, it's all that stuff. It's not, at the end of Logan, the world is not going to end. Whether he succeeds or not, the world is not going to end. The country's not going to get, you know, whatever. It's all personal stakes. Mm -hmm. and I think. I think what James is experiencing is maybe he's 
more fatigued about the end of the world type of stuff, and he, he, he likes that. What do you think? It's possible. I mean, it kind of goes back to what we were just talking about with the last question, where everybody has different, unique tastes. So I think both sides of this are in play, where maybe Black Panther just speaks to James's taste in styles of storytelling versus Infinity War. But then, yeah, I think superhero fatigue is a very real thing and a very real risk you run, which is why I think we're fortunate in getting movies like Black Panther and Guardians of the Galaxy and Captain America Civil War, movies with unique feels. So, yeah, we can have that big superhero mashup in an Infinity War where it's a buildup of years and years of material, but we also have the Ryan Cooglers of the MCU now who are putting their own unique style and flair in these movies. And if they continue doing that, that will clear some of the issue that could come with nonstop superhero movies that could lead to superhero fatigue. So I hope they continue on this track because for me, I won't have superhero fatigue if I keep getting this variation of material. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Having more diverse films that, that kind of echo other genres, I think is a good thing. So, all right, let's move on to the third question. We're moving over here. What do we got? <laughs> Nolan Dykstra pre presents, writes, how many streaming services will average people be willing to deal with just to watch two or three shows per service? It's not like cable where it's one service with one bill. Now each new service is another app to download, another bill to pay. I worry it will lead to oversaturation and collapse of the new business model. Would love to hear your thoughts. I got a lot of thoughts on this because I've been thinking about it nonstop because it's inevitable in the very near future, we're going to be tallying up a gigantic tab, tab of streaming service costs. And given how much I'm already paying for right now between Netflix, Hulu, and then some, when we start to add individual studio streaming services, and you know, we're talking about all this right now, not knowing how much these specific new streaming services are gonna cost, and I'm looking dead at Disney for yeah. something like this. Until we know those prices, I could never tell you my cap, but there is no doubt in my mind that this trend is going to continue and you know there, there's always a possibility that when things like this go on long enough that eventually there's saturation and the bubble bursts and that's a risky run with any form of business really anything out there at all but at this point in time until i get those price points i can't really write it all out and figure out how much is a reasonable amount to, to spend on this kind of material well, you know, I love talking about the streaming service no. stuff. Yeah, I like to get riled up because this is what he's talking about is eventually there's going to be so many services. I, uh, there's already too many. Mm -hmm. But once you throw the bigger people in the, in the mix like Disney and whatnot, and okay, yes, the price point doesn't matter. But at some point, I don't want to log into 50 different things to watch different. I, I like going. The reason why Netflix works is there's a good amount of content on there that you can watch, right? Mm -hmm. You don't only log in there to watch one show. There's a lot of movies, a lot of shows in there. So I would get tired, not just because of prices, but I just don't want different, what he's talking about, all these different apps, all these different logins. And I think eventually, yes, they, I don't think, it, there's not gonna be a collapse of this business model, but there's gonna be uh, more like what's kind of happening with you know, Disney trying to purchase Fox and Comcast trying to mm -hmm. purchase Fox where these things are going to start Consol folding. Yeah, mm -hmm. consolidation, where like right now there's an FX app, right? Yeah. That's eventually going to just be folded into something else because there's no way that FX app can sustain itself. Well, assuming the, that Disney sale goes through, the FX app, I assume, will kind of go away yeah, yeah. or that you know that's just a, a bold prediction not knowing if the sale is even going to happen but thinking about this and thinking about it not just from the price perspective but just from how annoying it would be to have to scroll through a bajillion apps to get all the content you want that sounds to me like it's going to open the door for tech companies out there to maybe develop some sort of device that centralizes it all or even just an app where all the other apps that you have are in some sort of central location because one of my favorite features on my iPad right now is that when I go into my video application mm -hmm. and I search for a movie title that I feel like watching, it'll tell me all the apps I have where that movie is available. So if we're talking about something like that that consolidates it all, I think that would help with that problem. Yeah, you know what does it for me is actually my Amazon Fire Stick. Mm. You can search and it'll go into, because I have HBO, so I have the HBO Go app, I have Stars as well. 
well, and it will search through them, those and then consult, like say, okay, you can watch this, but it's on this mm -hmm. app. So something like that would definitely help and, you know, but I still don't want to be logging into 5 million different know, things and, and paying 500 different <laughs> bills. So. Yeah, and uh, that might happen soon yeah. enough, but then hopefully we'll smooth it all out and figure it out. Yeah. All right, let's move <laughs> on to the... Backwards? Well, Can I go yeah, backwards? Yeah, yeah, we're moving this Am way. Am I going backwards? Hey, I, I gotta go forwards. Yeah. I feel like I'm gonna trip over All something, right. and this is gonna be a big disaster, but I made it to question four, which comes from David, who writes, with Black Panther getting such positive reviews and everyone praising Ryan Coogler, do you think he could be a fit to direct a Star Wars movie? With all the recent director issues, I think his storytelling would be a great addition to the Star Wars universe. My second question would be, what story would you like him to direct and explore? Uh, this is a good question. We won't spoil anything. Even Black Panther came out this weekend. Maybe not all of you guys have seen it yet. But what I can say in a non-spoiler way is Ryan Coogler does a great job about world building. So something like Star Wars is great for that. And I, th I would like to see him tackle something new. Like not taking any pre-existing characters. I don't want him to do like Obi-Wan or whatever. I'd love to see him do a brand new kind of like, it doesn't have to be a different timeline, mm -hmm. but maybe like a different corner of the universe, a different world and have different brand new characters that are not connected at all to mm -hmm. what we've seen in the past. Yeah, that is immediately where my mind went for that second question. If he is to direct a Star Wars film, I want, I, and I've been saying this about Star Wars movies in general, like, yeah, if the Obi-Wan movie really does pan out, I'm going to look forward to it. But part of the reason I'm so excited about the expanding Star Wars film franchise is because, to me, that is world building to the extreme, and there's so many unexplored areas that we could tap into. And when you have a creative force like Ryan Coogler, he's going to be able to kind of you know, stretch out and really show what he's capable of if he's not tied to something that we already know from a previous film. So I do hope that if he does wind up in this position, he gets to do it with a brand new character in a brand new setting, maybe with a unique tone, because what he does in Black Panther is really something else where, you know, it, it feels like an MCU film. I can watch it paired with any other MCU movie mm. I want, but no doubt that movie has a lot of his style in it. And um, again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but in particular, the way he shoots action, it's when you think about the kind of action you get in a Marvel movie and you can compare it to the kind of action you see in Creed, just in terms of his shooting style and how he doesn't resort to quick cut editing in order to build tension. It's about really incredible inventive blocking that can go a long way in the Star Wars film franchise. I just want him to be able to take his creative sense and his own unique touch to whatever he does next. Yeah, and, and much like, you know, with Ryan Johnson and The Last Jedi, a lot of controversy there, especially because these are characters that we've all known mm -hmm. and loved and, and when you're talking about Luke and Leia and, and, and even the tone, right? So if, you know, Ryan Johnson's doing his own new trilogy, that will be separate from that. If Ryan Cougar also is freed from those type of strings then i think the audience would be more forgiving right if it's it's set in a different place with characters they don't know i think so too i i hope they go that route because it would be it would be nice to explore new characters but it would be nice not to see filmmakers with that kind of pressure on yeah. them yeah all right let's move on to the last question all right here we go here we go sam oh. dean <laughs> can you read the question yes, dennis yes. uh sam dean writes it's been a while since you guys have done a commentary i wanted to know what films you guys are planning to do this year two requests for me would be logan and x-men first class before deadpool 2 comes out so to answer your question uh for sure we're going to be doing thor ragnarok uh that's the next i think blu-ray that's coming out uh, we also obviously will be doing The Last mm -hmm. Jedi and then Justice League as well. I think those three are, three are pretty much set that we're going to do those. In terms of going back, we, we had planned on doing Logan, but there was like we were moving around some stuff during The Office during yeah, that yeah. time the Blu-ray came out. I love Logan. I know Roka loves it. I know you like it a lot. Very much. That will be, eventually we will do one. I don't know when. I don't know if we can time it before Deadpool 2. We got to do those other three first, but then... We'll try and do some other ones. I think we missed Spider-Man Homecoming is mm -hmm. one that I think we, we still need to do. Yep. So well, w which ones would you like to see us do? All right. You can guess what I want to see. It's a certain movie that is celebrating an anniversary this year, and it also happens to have a sequel coming out this summer. What movie do I want to do a commentary for? Uh, why am I blanking all oh, the time? Oh, Cops are giving you a hint. Oh, Jurassic 
par. Yeah. I thought yeah. you were. I thought you were gonna say it because it. Well, I, want, I wouldn't mind doing it also, actually, especially when they do release that director's cut DVD. Mm -hmm. I am dying to see that. Okay. Anything else that, that we haven't covered? Maybe not superhero stuff that, that we could do? Not superhero stuff that would be suited for a DVD commentary. Well, I mean, running through my list of favorite films, mm -hmm. I don't think many of them would suit that format, but... Well, I mean, yeah. A, I'd love to do a Lawrence of Arabia. I'd love to do a your name commentary. I'd love to do a Lawrence of Arabia commentary. I don't think anyone's sitting there for three and a half hours. I bet I could get Cobster to do a split commentary with me, right? Woo! Hey! Yeah. There we go. Uh, all right, guys, that's it for this episode of Collider Mailbag. Thanks for joining us. Perry, where can people find you? Sitting down on Twitter and Instagram <laughs> at PNMROF. And you guys can find my Twitter at Think Hero, on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Collider Videos, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here, or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.